Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. Today we're going to be talking about my summer TVR. <laughs> <laughs> I did this for spring and I think considering I didn't read like that many books I think I actually read a fair few of the books I put on my spring TBR which usually I make these lists and I don't but I felt I think I read at least half of them and I'm pretty happy with that considering I was so busy in spring now I'm not even about to be that busy in summer apart from with YouTube so I feel like I'm gonna be able to read most of these books so I picked out the eight books I want to read most in summer. This is also, I found, a really useful way for me of making myself sit down, look at my books, and figure out what I'm actually most excited for and actually most want to read. So yeah, we're just going to get into it. I'm really excited. A lot of these are new releases, and let's just get into it. The first one isn't a new release, <laughs> but it is the most aptly titled, so we're going to go with it, and it is Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. Now this is set, I believe, <laughs> in the summer. Something fun, something for the summertime. I've never been one to read by the seasons, like, oh, I love to read summer's books in the summer, but I feel like this is the best time to read this book. All I know about this one is that it's set on this island where strange things begin to happen. I know it's about twin sisters. I feel like one of them has a sapphic relationship in this, but that I could be mixing stories up. Like, I... I could not be right, but I feel like it's sapphic. My main reason for wanting to read this is how obsessed I was with You Must Not Miss by Katrina Leno. That was one of my favorite books of last year. It was the perfect strangeness, weirdness, surrealism oh, that I love in young adult. Like I've just become a little bit obsessed with it. And I just want like, oh, the thing is, ah! <laughs> Do you ever get the urge to trot like a pony? I can't speak. The thing is this, her writing is so charming whilst deadly, deadly at the same time. It has this amazing duality to it, her stories. I'm just so excited. I want that surrealism, weirdness, craziness, and so many people have hyped this book up for me that I'm excited because I feel like you all know my taste and you've all said I'm gonna love it. Okay, next is a new release and it's Firekeeper's Daughter by Anjali Booley. I am really, really excited for this. My mum is actually currently reading it and she's been enjoying it. Where is she? Oh, she's right at the end. This is, how can you leave a book like that? Like on the last chapter? <laughs> book but I I've, I've been told it's one of those books that kind of verges between young adult and adult which I really enjoy it's written by an indigenous author following a young girl I believe 18 year old who is half indigenous but I don't believe she's lived with her community so she feels definitely like an outsider and she witnesses a murder and she agrees to be part of this FBI operation into drug related deaths in the indigenous community I think and I have heard this is just so heavy hitting and really surprising I think it's kind of like almost one book this kind of slow book for the first 100 pages and then the murder happens and it switches gear completely and changes into a completely different book. It's a debut and I've heard it's like one of the best debuts ever. I'm just really really excited to read it. It's one that I keep eyeing up. It is a little bit longer so I feel like that has stopped me from picking up recently but I think I actually need to take the plunge and start it. Next is the the first book my mum read <laughs> when I came home. I am her library. Is anyone else like this with their families? Like you just put books in front of them like read it. My mum when I come back home with 200 books and she had nothing to read whilst I was away. Thank God you're here. Where have you been, bitch? Where have you bloody been? Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This is the author of The Martian. I loved The Martian when I read it. I loved the film and I loved the book. My mum really loved this. She said it was a page turner. I think she read it in like two days and it's 500 pages long, I think almost. So this is about, I think, a guy who is the sole survivor on this mission. All of his crewmates are dead on this ship, basically. And I think he's the only one alive. My mum, <laughs> she said it's far-fetched, like even more far-fetched than The Martian. You're a bit like, okay. Okay. But she said it was great writing, super fast paced, just a page turner. I feel like I haven't read enough sci-fi this year. I, have I even read like any? I don't even know if I've read 
any sci-fi this year. I could, I don't think I have. I can't think of something that's like major genre is sci-fi that I've read this year. And I just want to read a bit more. Like I really, I do enjoy sci-fi when I read it. So super excited to get to this, especially because my mum loved it and she has very high standards. Then I feel like this is one people wouldn't expect me to put on this list, but it's one I really want to get around to. And it's Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. So I read Get a Life, Chloe Brown earlier this year. I read it in February and I really, really enjoyed it. I think only that book and Meet Cute Club by Jack Carbon are the only romance books I've really enjoyed. I haven't read a ton of them, but I don't have an amazing success rate. Look inside yourself! You must be the problem! So I'm really excited to get to this. So if you don't know, this series is a romance series where we follow three sisters and their respective like relationships and them falling in love with these different guys. So this is Danny Brown and I think Danny is like the most career driven of the sisters, like the most headstrong, like this is what I want, this is what I'm gonna get and this romance like is a complete curveball for her. I am just excited to try a bit more romance. I Listen, summer is the season of romance. I don't read a ton, but I feel like I want to read this. At the very least, I want to read this. It just feels like sunny and joyful and like a cute summer read. So I'm going to give it a go. Hopefully I'll love it as much as I really enjoyed Take Hint, Danny Brown. Uh, get a life, Chloe Brown. <laughs> I've got three mysteries left and a horror. There's quite a lot of mysteries on this list. <laughs> so next is one of my favorite editions that I own and it is The Mystery of the Blue Train by Agatha Christie. I am reading all the Hercule Poirot books in order. This is the this is the sixth Hercule Poirot book and I just love this edition. It's one of the most beautiful books I own. If you wanna hear about all of my beautiful books, go check out my last video. <laughs> Well, no, it'll, my, it'll be my video before last where I chat about all my most beautiful books, but this is on there. And I have read Murder on the Orient Express and I really, really enjoyed it. I loved the train setting and how claustrophobic and trapped that is. So I'm hoping this will give me similar vibes. I think Agatha Christie is great at what she does most of the time, but she does have some duds. I'm hoping this won't be one of them. <laughs> does that sound like something you want? Yes. Well, let me tell you, you'll never get it. Agatha Christie is probably my most like polarized author. Yeah, probably like the author I've read like five stars from and one stars from. Then next, oh, I'm so excited. You guys, if you watch my most recent book haul, there's quite a few of these on there. And this is one of the ones I'm most excited for. And it is In the Hall with the Knife by Diana Peterfrond. This I have talked about at length recently, but I am so excited for it. You guys don't understand. It is a Cluedo, if you're in the UK, or Clue mystery. So it's based on the game Cluedo or Clue and it's set at this US boarding school. It is YA and I have just heard such good things, particularly from Mara from books like Why. The characters in it are all named after like the characters in the game. So you've got one of them's called Mustard, one of them's called Scarlet, one of them's called, do you know what I mean? They have nicknames and stuff after the characters in the game. I just love a good YA murder mystery that's got a bit of grit to it. And that's what I feel like this does. And I love campiness and basing the book off of Cluedo is campy. Like it's, that's camp. That's, it's so good. It's so good. I'm so excited to read this. It's pretty short as well. So I feel like it's one that I can get to pretty soon. Like this is at the top of my list. I'm so excited to read it. Two more. Let's do the other mystery and then we'll end with the horror. So the last mystery I really want to read is Girl in the Walls by AJ Ganuse. I love the sprayed edges of this one. This is about a girl who lives in the walls. Can you believe it? <laughs> Goodness. So she is hiding in the walls of this house. I'm not sure if she's a ghost or if she is literally hiding in the walls of this house. I think there's some brothers living there and they are looking for her. Like they think that they can sense her. I don't really know. I've heard it's like, I've heard it's a bit of like a slow mystery thriller, a bit more suspenseful, but I love the cover. I love spread edges and it's just a new thriller release that has really intrigued me. It's by a debut author and I'm just so excited. And then the horror that I really want to read has been on my TBR for such a long time, but I'm really excited. Has it? When did I get this? I have no idea. Oh, Christmas. I think I got it Christmas. Okay, that's not that bad. And it is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. This was big last year, but I'm just so excited. I keep looking at it and I'm like, it's time. <laughs> 
So this is about some friends, some guy friends, who 10 years ago they shot an elk. And now, 10 years later, they are being hunted. I've heard that this is so thrilling and suspenseful and keeps you on the edge and so imaginative in the way that it brings in nature and stuff. I'm just really, really excited. I feel like I want to read more horror. It's another genre I haven't read enough of this year. This is one that I feel like maybe a lot of you have read. Let me know with any of these if you've read them, but especially this one I want to hear about. And oh, oh my god, I just I just look at it and I feel joy. And that's what you want. All of these books are ones I look at and I get excited. So that is my summer TBR. Do we think I can do it? I think I can read all of these this summer. I can do it. I'm gonna read them all. Let me know down below what is on your summer TBR. I cannot wait to hear. And yeah, if you go into the end of this video, comment a flower emoji. I love flower emojis. I love seeing flower emojis. So comment any flower emoji if you've gotten to the end of this video and I will see you very, very soon in another one. Bye.